Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Phanalysis, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I am Ruti4, this is Evan Never95. Hello. This is Jensur I1. Never forget Wizard Barufio, who said F instead of an S and ended up on the floor with a buffalo on his chest. And this is Antron Bandele. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, summary is Matt is once again not here, Antron. Oh, yeah. So maybe for the chapter is Ron's a dick to Hermione <laughs> and they end up becoming friends. <laughs> okay, leaving a few Best things out, ever. but I guess that works. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it's uh, called Halloween. Yes, just yes. In case. Chapter, yeah, chapter. <laughs> this is Halloween. Short, <laughs> short, and to the point. Indeed, chapter ten, Very Halloween, cool. which opens with uh, the different morning reactions, as I mentioned at the end of last, till end of last chapter. Different uh, reactions. Malfoy from each couldn't of the believe his eyes when he saw that Harry and Ron were still at Hogwarts next day, looking tired but perfectly cheerful. <laughs> Effectively, yeah, we're yes. just gonna read the whole thing to you instead of rebu- reviewing it this time. Yep. You know, that's it's the an audio drama. That's the way forward. <laughs> but yeah, no. So the it basically opens with the different reactions of uh, all the people who were on the little adventure. Um, you know, Ron and Harry excited for another one as they would be being the being them. Um, Hermione not talking to them because how dare you get me into almost get me in trouble? And, uh, <laughs> how dare you almost get us expelled? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> yeah, killed or she worse. Need to expelled. get her priorities in order. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and Neville, Neville never wants just, to yeah. see the dog ever again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just like, okay, never mind, that's behind me. That's the l- l- first and last adventure I will ever go on. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but yeah, I'm smash cutting to the Great Hall, obviously, and the uh, in- in- arrival of the Nimbus 2000, um, which is, I, I love yes. the visual of that, just this long um, wrapped package just descending down. They-, they captured that really well in the film as well, I think. Oh. In the book, it's described as being lifted in by six owls, whereas in the film, they only needed one. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. What I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we get to uh, see that this is another, you know, extend well the continuation of uh, McGonagall's soft spot as she, uh, he fortunately opens the letter first and finds, you know, do not open the parcel on the table. <laughs> Everyone will want one. Um, yeah, yeah, which is just it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. You know, his teacher bought him the. I mean, you know, after knowing him a most few weeks, room the most on the market, expensive yeah. room. Yeah, it's it's like this is not a cheap gift. This is a. Uh, I mean, I mean, we know the economics of uh, Harry Potter are completely broken, but uh, it, it's yeah. going to be up there in the in terms of the, her pay packet. Mm. I'm sure she has a well, very big saving. Yeah. She doesn't have a kid, you know. Oh yeah, she has nothing kid, to spend the money you on. Up, yeah. You you end up saving lots of money when you don't have children. Yeah, <laughs> well, that and the fact I mean, she's not exactly the type to be going out and spending it frivolously. She's going to be someone who has right. a lot of money uh, k- kicking about. But still, I mean, just just the nature of you know this random kid. Uh, well, I suppose yeah. it's not this random kid, but uh, for me, in terms of um, you know familial connection, there's no there's no real reason for her to go for it. It's p- purely out of the fact that she wants Gryffindor to win, which is just it's just funny. Mm-hmm. And usually at boarding schools, your room and board is paid for, right? So it's like nine months. You know, you're getting meals from house elves every every day, and you know you're, yeah, you're set up you. and <laughs> yeah, so it's mm-hmm. it's pretty pretty sweet gig, I suppose. Uh, on that yeah. front, but yeah, <laughs> I wonder what the average teacher's wage is for Hogwarts. Uh, right, class. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I don't the, think they ever talked about that. Yeah. Well, no, there's no real need, is there? But it'd be interesting to find out. Um, but yeah, yeah. The, the, the Nimbus arrives. Um, he doesn't unwrap it here because obviously that would be stupid. And uh, and and rushes upstairs to uh basically find out what it is inside because he wants to easy well no he doesn't actually he takes it anyway t- takes it upstairs, doesn't even wrap it immediately he has that they're horrible going up, torture of going, going up, through the lessons they're go- first they're going up and they get headed off by malfoy and his goons and malfoy's like i can tell what that what's in that package by the shape you've got a broom what the hell i'm surprised what he actually hell? threw it back to him and didn't like take it that's like mm. that felt very not malfoy yeah, to me thinks. that he didn't just like snatch it and be like all right well i'm gonna throw it away like i did with now <laughs> um with um neville's I remember all he kind of like just threw it back. He just was jealous. I, I guess, was like, oh, that's weird. I guess it's got not got too much to do with that. I mean, can you imagine he was literally sprinting off with the broom in hand? It would be a bit like a weird visual. I mean, <laughs> well, they were by the staircase, yeah. I and believe. So he could just throw was... it over the staircase. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, he could well, find it. Thing, the, the other thing, though, is that as they're talking, Professor Flitwick shows up almost immediately. So mm. it's like, oh, yeah, Malfoy didn't oh, have yes, a chance I heard about to do it. anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how Flitwick's so excited about it as well. You know, it's, it's the, I remember in yeah. the later on later books when he's talking about the Firebolt, he's, he's just a, a nerd for the uh, actual broom kind of designs themselves mm-hmm. um, with the enchantments mm-hmm. and such. So it's uh, it's nice to see that kind of early, uh, early example of that here. Get a bit of continuity. Um, but yeah, we uh, we have um, the a wonderful bit of kind of 
natural dialogue between him and Malfoy because Malfoy is you know scolding him, saying, "Oh, you won't be able to get you know, won't be allowed to have this broom. You're in trouble now. First years aren't allowed." Um, and you know, Ron's shooting back. Well, you know, it's kind of your. It's all thanks to you that we've got it after the flip, flip book clar- clarification. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I like that he's you know, it's such a gleeful um, and satisfying jab. It's like it's all thanks to you, Malfoy. Thank you. And then it cuts away to them. But it's true, you know. As they're Which becomes a stable for Harry. He's very cheeky like that. Mm. And Ron, and Ron as well. Yeah, just just the uh, kind of back and forth they have. And there's, she's good at writing, um, kind of connecting the dialogue, um, the, the very natural dialogue of the scene, and um, the narrative kind of description of what's going on as well. She, you know, with the smash um, cut or transition of the, uh, well, it's true. You know, with the with the m- movement of them away from Malfoy, it's she kind of seamlessly pulls this off at all times. She'll she'll. You'll be reading what's actually happening, and your your kind of visual of the scene will reorient itself around the following lines after the initial kind of intro of what she's you know setting up in a, in a paragraph. So you're like I said with this particular example, you've got um, you know well it's true it's it's that's a cut, but you don't recognise that as a cut until immediately afterwards when it feeds feeds on having them describe them moving back up to the common room. Um, it, it just it just blends really well and and flows seamlessly all all throughout the book. So there's many examples of this. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So they make it back to the common room and they run into Hermione again, who's less than thrilled about Harry's new gift. (laughs) Mm. Gift for breaking the rules, as she puts it. Yeah, it's like she's she's, uh, admonishing them for, you know, seeing Mm -hmm. the... uh... Seeing it as basically, she's annoyed that she's like you said, getting rewarded for doing something wrong. It's just it's it's Mm -hmm. against her nature at this point, and uh, yeah, she's she's admonishing them for it. Um, and (laughs) and Ron and Harry are just like "Eh, whatever. Quick, yeah, quickly, Ron quickly fires back. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm, as he as he tends to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they go up to their rooms, and Harry's Harry's opens it up, and we get our first view of the Nimbus mm. in all its glory. You said about how I mean, and it's she describes this is, food. This is also kind of broomsticks are also in that vein. You know, she's very yeah. good at making this you know just piece of wood seems you know just beautiful and uh, and exciting. I mean, I, I remember the particularly with the fire bolts, um in the in book four when uh, when they're kind of examining it on the bed again. It's just like, oh wow, I want this. I want one of these. <laughs> I, and that's yeah. actually I one mean, area where Harry I got even s- notes how even though he doesn't really know the difference between brooms, even he, you know, gets gets um, can tell how pristine it is and mm. how there's something really special about it, you mm. know, and even from his say, perspective. And I also have to say that the design of the broomsticks is one of the areas where the Harry Potter movies really succeeded. The Nimbus 2000, as it is in the first Harry Potter movie. That is a cool prop. Oh yeah, like seriously, it is even if it's even if all I could mm-hmm. get was just the prop, it didn't fly. I'd love to have that prop. <laughs> it's just sleek. It's a yeah, really just having it by your bedroom. Yeah, well, I'm not so big a fan of the fireball. The fireball seemed very kind of um, I don't know, not lazy, but just kind of they, the, they... the firebolt in the third one looked look. It, it was just a broom. It, it, was, it was a, a lot stick. rougher. <laughs> um, but yeah, I whereas the Nimbus was just like glorious mm. i wonder where that prop is now now i'm kind of curious oh it'll be hanging you know, actually somewhere. in the stage in england uh, mm. yeah uh. and on the same on the same note i gotta say one of the things that the movies did is they had most of the brooms having actual foot rests and actually yes. having the brooms themselves shaped mm-hmm. almost like a bicycle chassis right which to me just makes so much sense because you can't just have your flying broomstick be just a broomstick otherwise you'd roll off it you got to have it have some sort yeah. of shape in there just for the sake of ergonomics you got to have something to rest your butt on <laughs> yeah the, the stirrups were a really good design choice i think and it, it, it kind of adds that you know, they're riding brooms. They're not just, you know, normal brooms. It, it gives you that kind of um, unique flavor to mm-hmm. the design. I, you know, they really did a good job. Um, and, and the way she describes in the book as well, it's, it's, you know, it's just it's sleek, it's elegant. It, the way she describes the kind of um, pointed tips of the of the tail end um, being neatly trimmed. And, and uh, you know, even ma- broom maintenance he has to do in later books. It's it's all, it just makes it feel so much more it's a little, real. little kit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you kind of get that um, uh, sense of... Uh, you know, there are things you can relate this to. You know, if you have a bike and you're, and you're maintain, maintaining it, and you know it's sleek and new and brand, you know, you can you can relate it to that as a kid or just anything. Just having this new, um, you know, present. She she makes she makes she makes it feel exciting, like you know any any big um sort of significant toy or, or you know like I said bike or whatever um, would feel for a kid. It, she she captures that kind of excitement really well. If you're, Callan, if don't you have a motorcycle? I do. Yes. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, much the same. 
<laughs> the next sequence takes us onto the Quidditch field for the first time. Well, it yes. actually reminds me a bit of playing either, I can't remember which game it was, either Chamber of Secrets or Azkaban, where you could literally just take your broom out Chamber of and Secrets. just go, oh, yeah, and, go oh. and, just, yeah. and then do that yeah. and do exactly what he does right now. You know, like that was like the, and it had like the nice orchestral music that like plays for you while you're doing it. So like you have that same feeling here mm-hmm. when he's like, yeah, being on this thing, like he couldn't wait, like he could not wait for Wood to get there. He's like, I'm just gonna ride the thing right now. Yeah, um, I, and, and it feels great. I spent hours just flying around the castle, um, on on that room in the in Chamber of Secrets game. It was brilliant, <laughs> brilliant game. Um, but yeah, we got the yeah, uh, we got the Quidditch the lesson one. from Wood, um, kind of establishing the rules and the way the different um, different players have to, or the roles different players have to fill. Um, it's it's you know it's, it's an funny exhibition dump, but it's fun. Well. Yeah, well, yeah. it's kind of well. The sport of Quidditch has always been J.K.'s uh, commentary on how ridiculous she thinks sports are in general, and kind of the rules around them, and just like the idea <laughs> of them, like you know, combining like basketball, football, soccer, and mm. people's like fanaticisms for these sports, um, and making like the most ridiculous things she could like think of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it's an engaging sport, you know. You can laugh at the rules all you want, um, and they are a bit ridiculous, but. Uh... It's it's thrilling to read and and just the idea of you know the different types of roles you can fill it's got it's got something for everyone you know people who are interested in the more rough style sports and contact sports you've got the blood um, the bludgers and the beaters people who are interested in kind of team oriented scoring sports you've got chasing you know it's it's and obviously the single um the it's, single kind of racing style of the catching of the of the snitch it's just it's, Wood's it's a basically nice kind a of, goalie yeah yeah well he is you know he's a goalie yeah. <laughs> Well, that's how I exactly how to explain it to like my campers when playing Muggle Quidditch is like you just liken it to some sort of Muggle sport, and there's something that will align. Mm. Muggle Quidditch really well. Yeah, don't ask. Don't ask. (laughs) It's actually a thing. Colleges play it. Like actual colleges play it. They do, and it's painful to watch. (laughs) What? Um, They basically just they basically just turned it into a land bound sport where it's kind of played the same as soccer, but with the don't look it up. Don't. <laughs> don't. You sure. don't need it in your life if you've managed to avoid it. Anyway, um, I'm just curious. <laughs> we get Keep the, going. No. We get we get the uh, descri- description from Wood and the nice little kind of uh, overview of how each of the roles and and um, balls work. Um, I like in particular when the bludger comes out. It kind of adds this. Uh, it's a nice kind of establisher of the, not not tension because no one really cares about you know the, the dramatic tension of bludgers, but uh, at least not until the what second. What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> Told you not to look at it. <laughs> But the, Are you uh, fucking kidding me? <laughs> but the but yeah, just the the, the setup for how yep. you know, much of a danger the budgets kind of represent in the game itself. Um, I like the way she kind of set that up and, and added some bit more um, base tension. Oh my tension god, to it. it's on Wiki. How? Are you kidding me? Stop it! Stop <laughs> looking at I it. Found, I, I, I found it kind of uh, weird that Wood changed. didn't know what basketball was like at all. Yeah, well, I mean, they don't seem to know about a lot of random things when they should. It's it's she, she again. It's part of the whimsy of the early books, really. Even though it does happen in the later ones, still, it's just they they right. seem just completely like, they randomly cut off. They would be that disconnected from the Muggle world. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I mean, they you wouldn't catch be. a glimpse there are of too some many basketball. Muggleborns and too many um, you know, half and half. It's just, it's just right. they they need to have been more interacted in, in, in involved yeah. as a society, but we just have to hand wave that, unfortunately. But yeah, the, the, just yeah. the the uh, the fact that Wood says that you know Harry would make a fair beater. I like the um. Just the natural well, nature that's of that. only well, of in the movie. In the book, he just yeah, that's only in the movie. In the book, he just beats it away, and that's that. But I did enjoy the detail from the movie where it's like Harry just smashes it away, and Wood's like, oh, "Not bad, Potter. You'd make a fair beater." Yeah, it's the, way, it's, all... it's the way he says it. It's brilliant. Great delivery. Yeah. yeah, and it's almost an interesting idea. It's like, how would Harry Harry fare if he was put in one of the other roles on the team instead of always being shoehorned into Seeker? Like, how would he function as a as a chaser or as a beater? Because especially because he grows up into his body. Because initially it, they say that Seekers are best when they're like you know they're usually the smallest person on the team. Mm-hmm. But then he gets to be almost as tall as Ron, you know, by the end of the series. So he would be able to take on those other roles in, on the team rather than just being seeker yeah it's and like Victor crumb is huge you know mm. <laughs> he's a, he's yeah. A seeker. yeah yeah of course a lot of it probably also just comes down to how well you harmonize with your broom and how you move through the air as a flyer because it seems to me that the thing about beaters is a beater is not a very fast flyer but what he's got is a huge amount of inertia you're not going to be mm-hmm. swerving him off his course once he chooses it definitely yeah and 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 you know the fact that his uh, as we said last time the fact that his father was a chaser as well it's you know it's a nice um, uh, tie into the fact that you know when he's older he could he could fulfill more more mm-hmm. than one role on the team um, and probably do it very well it's just he's so used to the the seeker position and he's just overall athletic too like mm. even in the previous chapter he was leading the 
the when they were running down the corridor away from Filch, you know, mm-hmm. like not just because he was being the leader of that situation, but he's just like, yeah, he's the most athletic kid. Yeah, because for because mm-hmm. he spent his entire childhood <laughs> being chased around and beaten up by Dudley, so mm-hmm. he's super quick on his feet and he can take a beating. So he, he was being chased and beaten. <laughs> Lovely. Did, 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 <laughs> did you get it, Connor? Beaten. Chased yes. and beaten. Did he? Jason Did Peter. Ready for just make a just make a cheese joke? Wow! I'm channeling my inner Evan. Um, anyway, don't we, put anything proud, past bro. the Brits. <laughs> you make me proud. But we get we get. Uh, uh, we're also the introduced to the snitch, snitch, mm. and apparently, and apparently, you know, he talks about how the game isn't over until someone's catch catches it. And apparently, there was a game that went for three months one time. Yeah, they had to keep cycling the players out. And, and they also mentioned uh, later on as well that they had a That's game ridiculous. once where they had 700, all 700 fouls or something. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, we're committed during that World Cup. Yeah. Or was it World Cup or not? I, I think it was just I, a regular. Uh, uh, it, was in, it was in like 1479 or something, wasn't it? Yeah, what so what year was Cup, it? World Cup might not have been established. I don't know. I can't remember if it mentions it specifically in the text. But, um... But regardless, yeah, it, it proves that Quidditch can be a very crazy game. <laughs> it's like yes. there's, there aren't many limitations put on it. Three months. I mean, if you know, the one thing I else, got... can you imagine being an, an audience member? I mean, what what are you going to yeah, do? I, about... I guess work will just have to wait. <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just, just go just, come back. Just, you know, let's pray like to be like the Hunger the... Games. Mm. Pray to God <laughs> that the Quidditch like stands the also have some sort of protective shield because bludgers and crashing players. Yes. Because yeah. Quidditch is chaotic. It's like crap like that goes down. Mm, especially at Hogwarts, where every year some sort of new drama takes place <laughs> involving the Seeker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there is no such thing as an average year at Hogwarts. Mm. Not really. but, but once the uh, kind of explanation of that tra- um, sets up the Quidditch chapter moving on to the next one, um, we, we get the transition for one of the first major transitions. In fact, the first major transition, I think, um, for time that comes kind of a staple of the series with the uh, moving into kind of October, um, not well, quite for, winter. First setting, major but... transition since the first, the since the very first chapter. Yeah. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, for specifically for Hogwarts, sorry, yeah. for the, for, in terms of the term time changing, because it, it kind of um, oh, okay. it helps. Sorry, it helps. You, you didn't specify. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It helps. It helps move like the time forward and, and keep focus on you know kind of the school event year because especially in later books you don't want to go over the, the exact entire term every single time. So it's important to get the transitions well to well p- p- place them well in the story and and the school kind of academic year. And she does that very well. This is the first major one of the of the series, so it's worth noting. Um, but there we get that transition and leads us into the uh, charm class, the iconic charms class with a uh, mm-hmm. Wingardium Leviosa as the uh, as the topic. Yes. Swish and flick, remember? Swish and flick. <laughs> it's like one of the few I spells I know how to do nice. properly because it's like you know deliberately explained in the book, mm-hmm. you know, versus some of <laughs> the other ones where you kind of like guesswork like i like one theory about one person saying that avada Kedavra is supposed to be done like a lighting bolt because that's the way that you know the scar is on uh, harry's head or uh, some other spells i think spelling armors is supposed to be like a circular motion or if you go to the harry potter world they show you all the different kinds of like motions for the uh the park where you have your wand and then you could do it and i always like that like those details about mm. um the harry potter world like getting that deep into it yeah, you don't very often get the kind of whereas, mechanics yeah. of how these. Whereas in the operate. films, whereas in the films, you just kind of point. Yeah, God, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything's just a point. It, point and no laser. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, well, it's either it's either they're pointing their wand straight at the target when casting, or they're waving their wand broadside out for defensive spells, and that's about the extent of it. And it kind of, it's disappointing mm. because it's like it just seems to me it'd be so interesting to actually like go beyond the wand movements, but go straight up into, like, are there wizard martial arts, like, maybe specific stances that are good for specific spells and stuff right. like that? Which, mm-hmm. dude, you totally, if you are ever in Florida I mean, what, or California, go to the Harry Potter, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter land, and they they give you a wand, or not they give you one, you have to pay for the wand, but you go to, like, <laughs> nine different sections, and there's, like, distinct motions for everything, and then you do kind of feel that, um, like, oh, for instance, uh, Dean Thomas's wand has a weird grip on it. Like everybody has a, a weird grip, mm. but you can feel the difference of like how a charms wand, uh, something that's like more uh, geared to that, has a different feel to it versus even, like it, like for instance, um, uh, Bellatrix Lestrange, she has like that hook talon like kind mm. of a yeah. thing going on, oh. and you can feel like that's gonna be like a quick like she's very gonna you know 
it's she'll attack you very grip. violently with it with that it, you know yeah it's like it's a freaking pistol grip for violent right. aggressive motions it's like i suppose the best way to think about it is this one that i made for myself this is clearly transfiguration whereas this decorative chopstick with a nice little painted handle is a charms wand my Reaching for the Hermione wand. <laughs> yeah, Hermione, I think, is very charmsy too. Like this right here, you uh, have to hold it very delicately. And then, like, even there's weight to some of the different wands too, mm -hmm. um, in the way you use them. Uh, uh, but like I was saying, like Dean Thomas's wand, like his had a really weird grip where only a right-handed person could could hold it. But it was very, you had to be on the edge of that the way you hold it. So like, I don't know, I, I like those kind of little details. And this is like one of the scenes where we get that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying I like the kind of uh, characters they give each of the ones, and, and I particularly enjoy when they give us a little bit of the base mechanics for spells. I mean, we get a, the occasional flourish um, from the, both the films and the mm -hmm. book descriptions, but it's rare that you'll get an actual class teaching you these specific kind of motions and wordplay right, and, yeah. and enunciation mm -hmm. and stuff. It's, it's very cool. I wish we had more of it. It just makes mm -hmm. me think about how Vol Rafe finds as Voldemort held his wand, because if we're going by that logic, Rafe finds clearly viewed his wand as a charms wand, because it was talked about how he was always holding it at his fingertips, viewing it as this delicate instrument, or where it's almost like just resting in his open hand. It's like he yeah. doesn't even have his fingers fully closed mm -hmm. around it, and, you know... Well, as we talked in our first episode, we do feel like Charms is like the, <laughs> one of the most beneficial. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so uh, broad and natural. It really is, you though. Can, yeah. You can do anything <laughs> from yeah. from levitation to you know secret binding. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we we get the kind of the setup of that class, and and it's yeah, and it's an iconic scene. Everyone remembers it. This is one of those ones that kind of transcends mm -hmm. even the fandom. Um, you say when Guardian Leviosa to someone and like Spe Expelliarmus, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, with the yeah, with with the. It's, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa, um, from Hermione that uh, kind of leads into the next part of the chapter where Ron accidentally scars off a life. <laughs> which, which is not really an exaggeration because that kind of thing sticks with you. And that's the kind of thing that she will remember for a very long time to come. Um, yeah. She'll get over it, obviously, but you know, it's just uh, it'll always be there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, with with the we it all hurts know though. Mm. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it hurts yeah. me when you see a running part in the film or, or book, regardless in your head, whatever. When you see a well, running part crying, it's harsh because he's says she doesn't have any friends, and you're like, yeah, you realize that maybe Neville's probably her best friend, and like no one really wants to hang out with Neville. Mm. It's just... <laughs> which sucks for Neville too <laughs> well yeah but he's, 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 no he's, one wins he's got Dean and Seamus to an extent but um but yeah, yeah. you're right it's, it's just it's it's so horrible I mean you've everyone's seen mm -hmm. something like that in their school life and it's like no be nice to the people please you, you don't like seeing, yeah. uh, seeing that kind of thing and you know Ron and Harry themselves feel guilty about it you know it's not like they're completely it wasn't in you know an intentional um they were just belly aching mm. and and yeah it's like they were just belly aching and then they practically slapped her in the face without realizing it and like they were both like oh it's like they tried their bit it's like the impression i get reading this bit is that they were trying to just pass it off but for both of them it was just kind of gnawing at their gut because it's like well it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who you who the person is you don't it's like you're fine sniping at someone but you don't actually want to truly hurt their feelings and leave them in tears unless you're a really malicious git that sort of thing is never a victory. Yeah, and it's and it's the fact that they were talking behind her back as well. You know, it wasn't like they were saying it to her face. It makes it all the more um, painful because she knows it's you know it's real in, in her eyes. It's they actually mean it, and they do. Or Ron specifically, obviously, does mean it. Um, he he gets over it and he realizes you know it was wrong. But it's just it's yeah, it's very painful because it's it's raw and and real and yeah. Not fun, mm -hmm. but it sets up you know her being yeah. uh, being set up in the in the toilet and crying and missing lessons as well, which you know you know means uh, she's her. It's a rarity, yeah. That's big. Yeah, so they have yep. a so that leads us Halloween into Halloween. Mm. Yes, which is once again a wonderful description of, of the food and the feast and the and the scene. Oh my goodness, it makes you hungry, almost like Game mm. of Thrones too, because uh, oh, really? George R. R. Martin's really obsessed with the food, but so is J.K. Rowling. Yeah. <laughs> but her food sounds more delicious because she's playing in a world where you can have like every flavor ever. Yeah, there's no, there's, there's no doesn't matter about consistency. You can just have the entire it's not palette just, on one table. It's not just <laughs> mutton grease dribbling right. down your chin as you dig mm. into that chicken leg. Yeah. <laughs> every flavor. Yeah, pumpkin pasties and stuff like that. It's like, oh yeah. Mm. It's, it's, that's why oh, I no, love no, going no. to the Harry Potter. By the way, I know I've been talking about Harry Potter land like this entire early like, time, but like seriously, <laughs> guys, got, it's so itch? wonderful. Have you got the itch. Do you want to go again? <laughs> well, I just went like a week ago, and I and I 
for once, someone that I went with actually went to just stay in that area and just kind of live in that area versus like, oh, let's just get on the rise and leave, like, you know, trying to be like right. a completionist of the, the theme park. Mm. But just like being in there and like even like the food, even to the extent of the food or you go to Zonko's and you like just have some of the candy and just like having butter beer is just so amazing to me. So it's great. It's a great place to be. Yeah, it's really cool. We should all go. We should all go one day. That'd be fun. Oh, Dope. I have to face the heat though. Ugh. Can we go to the London one? Wow. <laughs> Where should we be fucking lying? Okay. All we need to do is be like Scorpius from Farscape and get some I, some refrigeration packs that we can strap to our heads. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we have, we have the Halloween. We have the Halloween feast, and we have well, the one not quite like I wouldn't call it iconic, but it's definitely a meme. And um, with the with the quirrell running in and go <laughs> crawl in the dungeon. I totally I reenacted that scene thought when I was know. little. This you collapse. Meant, thought you wanted to know. <laughs> it's yes. it's a fun. And we scene. do get a major deferral from the movie, which I'm sure Callan loves, because instead of mm. uh, Dumbledore quiets the ruckus by shooting sparks out of his wand, whereas in the movie... It's just, just Richard kinda... Harris. Yeah. It's just Richard yeah. Harris being Richard Harris. When Richard Harris yeah. commands silence, you shut the hell up! Because it's Richard Pretty much, Harris! Yeah. yeah, and the, the musical kind of sound sound design of that scene, and that moment when he does scream at them, it, it's it's dramatic and it's powerful with a clap of thunder and, and lightning obviously outside. Yeah. But, uh, but with the, with the, and it's more definitely the, it's more, more in character films. than uh than uh definitely. did you put your name in the goblet <laughs> <laughs> did you put your name in the goblet fire <laughs> yeah, it's like he raises the, he doesn't raise his voice to express emotion he raises his voice to make himself heard and command attention precisely there's a difference precisely it actually mm -hmm. works in that moment um it, it's just uh in the later films it gets to the point where he's actually emoting in an angry you know <laughs> loud shouty voice like, what are you doing please stop that you know it's, this here is just for practical practicality sake and even his position and his and his and his, um, and his kind of body motion is doing it he's very it's very kind of a chesty leaning into shout it's not like arm waving and and all that jazz so it, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine moment but i definitely do prefer the, the book of virgin you're right uh, evan it's a powerful shout but not he, a desperate he remains shout. yeah he remains calm he instructs all the students to go to their quarters while he and the teachers look for the troll but as they're on their way out, Harry and Ron... But before we get to that, though, can we, can we just talk about the plan for a second? Because this is just the start of Voldemort <laughs> being a bit crazy, or Quirrell, or both. You know, it's just, all right, here's the plan. We'll let him a troll. Been crazy? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, but it's, 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 to the kind of ludicrous uh, degree. We'll let him a troll, and the, tro and, the, and the teachers will be incapable of dealing it for a good, good, at least two hours, and that'll give us enough time to get it into the, and capture the stone, and we'll leave, and no one will be any the wiser. And no one will suspect that this is a distraction. It's like, what, what? I mean, he really thinks this is going to work? I mean, one of the teachers could deal with this, let alone Dumbledore. Maybe the, the idea is is that this was Quirrell's plan, and he's starting to get desperate. Like, this is like, like Quirrell is kind of in the same in the same position here as poor Draco is in Half-Blood Prince. He's yeah. got Voldemort breathing down his neck, demand, literally. demanding literally. results. Literally, yeah. and Literally breathing down his neck, demanding results, and he's, he's, he's at wit's end. You know, oh, I mean, still, and meanwhile, though, like, I mean, when it fails, like Voldemort's like, Voldemort's like, oh, if I could physically face palm, I would. <laughs> Quirrell, hit the back of your head. No, but it, it, yeah. but why would why would he? You know, Voldemort's there. Voldemort's part of the planning process, presumably. So why would this? Why would he think this would work? It's, it's very confusing. I mean, obviously, it's part of the well, whimsy of the early you, early books, and you have to kind of hand wave the way. I know that. Yeah, but children's it, children's books, silly villains. Of course, you know, and, and this and this plans. book is. I mean, the next chapter specifically has an even more ludicrous situation. But you know, it, it's it's you have to hand wave it away. But it's worth noting that it is one of those kind of. Um, early book mm. problems that, <laughs> that kind of don't really fit with the tone of the late, later books. Um, but either way, we get this, uh, as you said, this leads them into them coming back to the common room, but uh, on the way, Harry and Ron realise, oh crap, Hermione doesn't know, um, and they go to warn her um, gallantly and partly because they feel guilty for actually putting her in the, there in the first place. But the this kind of leads us into the most one of the most important moments in the entire series for me, and, and I like the way it's kind of subtly but impactfully written as the decision is made. They, they obviously when they, they lock a, the troll into the into the toilet with her without realizing it, they're trying to you know get get it sealed in one place and to grab a teacher. But when they're running away, they obviously hear her scream. And I like that it's described as you know that it was the last thing they want to do. But what choice did they have? Um, and in that moment, you know the two heroes are born, and this is the real start of the golden hero golden tri trio's kind of full um, journey in the narrative. You know this this is the moment yeah. when and they are defined it, as the heroes they are. 
It's also interesting because it also marks a pretty big difference because between Harry and Tom Riddle. Because what would Tom Riddle have done in this situation? Like year one, Tom Riddle, troll in the dungeon, let's lock it in the bathroom. Oh shit, there's someone in the bathroom. Cover his tracks, make sure no one ever knew he was there. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yep. And maybe even blame it on somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah grab a yes. student, make him cast a... Where's Hagrid? Spell. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, precisely, where's Hagrid? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to He probably wonder, bought the troll like, in himself. Was that the first time, was that the, like, the one thing in Chamber of Secrets, was that the first time that he had scapegoated Hagrid for something? Because it seems to me that Hagrid is, well, we all love him, but he's the sort of poor sod that is kind of begging to be scapegoated by a douchebag. You're not wrong. But I highly doubt it was anything made as major as, uh, as you know, Aragog, um, for sure, but maybe on a lesser scale. Probably not Tom Riddle though. He, he's probably not the uh, type of person to strike twice on that. It's a bit more, bit, bit too sp- suspicious, uh, even for mm. people who aren't Dumbledore. Maybe. But yeah, I, I just yeah, like, I just so like they the go moment back in. It, is, and, it is a yeah. it is a hugely significant one. You know, this is the defining traits of these characters that they will do this. They, they, what choice did they have? You know, there was no choice for them. Mm-hmm. They're Gryffindor, and and they run in to the uh, toilet. Rather, rather comically, <laughs> because this entire scene is ridiculous, but it's still great. Yes, it's a very, it's a very child-friendly fight. Yeah, I, I like the um, but creative. The yeah, like I said, creative. Yes. Lots of different things going on. I mean, you know, you have to have some serious guts to jump on the back of a troll and try and strangle him and stick something up his nose. So, yeah, well, you know, well, the nose sticking points, was unintentional, that. but uh, but you're right. The, gra- the grabbing right. itself, um, for sure. Like, you, I mean, the smell, if nothing else, can you imagine? I mean, they describe it from being a corridor away, and then oh, I do not want to be pressing your your face up against the back of its head. Not nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, with Ron throwing things to just try and distract it. Um, and the this is actually I mentioned we mentioned last chapter that she's very good at setup um, of a scene. This is one of the examples I found yep. as a, as a as a um, exception very to that episodic. because. Yeah, oh, no, not, you thought it was yeah, I thought yeah, it was very no, 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 no. where the, they... se- the sequence and everything itself is, is spectacular. It's one of my favorite chapters. But the there's a specific point where he says it grabs a tap. Um, now, in your head, obviously, you're assuming that there's rubble around and the troll's been damaging things and it's, there's a tap free to grab. But there, there isn't actually anything in the text that sets that up. So it basically just says he grabs a tap and throws it, which is could a tap mean... a faucet? Is that what yeah, that is? Yeah, sorry, a tap is a faucet. Okay, okay, yeah. I know. Yeah. For you weird Americans. And, and but, um, it could just mean that Harry has super strength and precisely, how to build a wall. Precisely. He could have literally just ripped that off the sink. And it's like, um, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't actually specify that's on the floor, so there's actually, you know, there are the occasional slip-ups. If this was adapted as an writing. anime, they probably would have Harry just be like, grab, <laughs> smash, chuck. My Hogwarts Academia again. But, yeah, Strongest 11, 11 year old in the world. But, but yeah, it was worth noting because it's one of the rare examples where there is a kind of minor slip up there. Um, it, it, it obviously yeah. rides around your head, but still worth noting. Um, but yeah, so they're throwing things at the wall, and not at the troll as well, at the wall to kind of make that clattering sound. It's a nice kind of bit of creativity there on both uh, the characters' parts. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously, whereas, the, the, whereas in the film they throw them at the troll. Mm, yeah, both work, or at least both make sense. Yeah. But, but uh, it, you know, like... I, I like the ideas on both ends. But obviously, mm-hmm. ending with the Wingardium Leviosa from Ron. Who kind of does that yeah, and I will I will say one one differentiation from the movie that I think the book does uh, do better for Ron's character is the fact that in the film Hermione like says you know swish and flick do it like this but whereas in the book he does it himself on his own which yeah I he think has right. his, uh, without having Hermione yeah. it. see there, yeah. there there are two sides to this because I, I agree with that um it definitely is nice to see Ron kind of have that what we call it, development but that success you know himself by by himself. But the problem is, in the book, Hermione doesn't really do anything here. She's kind of just uh, cowering, Comple- completely, completely, yeah, completely understandable. And she and she definitely makes up for the, the, the you know her part of the equation when she's when she lies to McGonagall because that's a huge deal for Hermione as a character. You know that that's a that's a that's her kind of bravery moment in that scene. But I, I, I could have done with just something more. Like I, in the in the film, I think that worked well with her being the one you know trying to more encouragingly um, help Ron with that role. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying him. it's bad or anything. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Well, no, I completely agree. Like it's just two, two sides of the same coin. One's good for Ron. One's good for Hermione. I just I would just wish that she had something to do in the book side because um, with this being the kind of creation of the Golden Trio, she's not she's not you know bringing as much as she usually does to these kind of situations because you know she's not one to panic in, in a crisis. Um, she she mm-hmm. obviously and understandably is doing so here. But um, yeah, it just it's it's it feels like there's something missing. There's something could have been here. Just a little bit of just something simple, like um, like 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 in the film, you know, she, she helps Ron. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, it was worth a note, I think, because it, it it's it's a shame to have her just be that damsel in distress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. Hermione is no damsel. No. But still, I do like I just like love how simple the takedown of the troll was. It was literally Wingardium mm. Leviosa. Take away its club. Drop. 
clunk clunk yeah yeah almost accidental as well you which know? makes it all the more humorous <laughs> It's, it's, it's a really cool little moment and uh, it's an a nice, it's a perfect little it's a perfect little example of how even non-combative spells can still be applied combatively and be effective it's mm. like oh i'm just gonna drop this thing on your head <laughs> and another funny thing is it's an, it's just another example of disarming your opponent it's yeah. nearly yeah. everything that the hogwarts trio do is is disarming it's always the expelliarmus um, equivalent which is yeah. funny mm-hmm. But yeah, so the teachers arrive, having heard this uh, ruckus, and storm in, and you get the hilarious response from McGonagall. <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah. Can you imagine, like, her, what, yeah, this, is, this is kind of the start of why is it always you three, you know, for her. It's, she'll look back in, in years to come and be like, oh my god, why is it always you three? I know it's in the film only, but mm. it's very apt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, I also do kind of found, find Quirrell's reaction here interesting, because it's one of those things that takes on a whole new meaning from the first time you read it to the second time. Because the first time, it's just like, oh, it's just Quirrell being Quirrell. Second time, it's like, Voldemort's probably on the back of his head going, you said this would work. What the <laughs> fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of falling, falling back onto the toilet seat. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, the scene wraps up. The, the point system, once again, makes no sense because they she gives them five points for this. When, you know, that, that's answering a question. You get ten points for asking a question later on in the, in the book series. But but here mm-hmm. she gives five points for, for defeating a mountain troll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, she gives them ten, but it only adds up to well, five. Yeah, yeah. So five, each. five. Yeah, five Fine. apiece for it. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But, but yeah, so that kind of wraps up and she's, she gives them the, uh, the admonishment and also the reward. And they return yep. to the common room, um, basically mm-hmm. sealing it at the end of the chapter with one of my favorite lines in the entire series with the, you know, there are some things you can't do without ending up liking each other and taking out a 12 foot mountain troll is one of them. Um, yep. The, the final little ribbon on the, on the seal of the, uh, of the start of the golden trio. It's a nice yep. end. That's I, literally, there's I like just, moments like that in life where you, like your friend groups are created off of circumstances yeah. like that like there 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 is a circumstance where you know like harry and ron would have only known hermione as like kind of an acquaintance but not like mm-hmm. as a best friend you know type scenario but what and i just love the little detail of how when they it's like apparently hermione entered the common room before them but she waited for them yeah yeah she was she was hanging back and waiting for them to come through and the and just the awkward not quite awkwardness but the the, the so natural believability of them all kind of looking in different directions just, and not quite facing each other and just you know thanks and then they're going to grab, grab going they're going to grab plates together it's just it's such a simple kind mm-hmm. of a and yeah it's like they just it's, it's they so just important. come in realize that they're now a group and they're a group mm. and and that mm-hmm. is it that's the golden trio set for all of time and yeah and that's how friendships can be done oh. it's 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 uh, powerful yeah. and natural stuff very cool but uh, that kind of wraps up this chapter, though, guys. Unless you have anything you want to say uh, to, to kind of finish off. Another episodic mm, chapter yeah. where mm. I feel like the it really does have the setup and payoff kind of situation where it is a self-contained like piece of story that has some overlap. You know, you have like a little bit of Quidditch because that's going to come up a little bit later. But then, you know, you have the charmed lesson coming back into like the troll scenario. And then, you, of course, you have like your grander arc with like Quirrell and Snape and like what's going on there. But um, it, another one of those chapters are very good slice slice of story. Mm. Yeah, but at the same gives you absolutely time, that, everything you need. Yeah, that's the great thing about the chapters in these books, especially this first one, is that they make you want to come back for more without needing to end on cliffhangers. Mm. Yes, and they've got very smooth transitions between them as well. That they'll they'll lead you straight in. You'll just turn that page and you'll be carrying on. There's no there's no kind of dividing line between them, despite the fact that they are being very episodic. Um, as well, these these last these three kind of we're covering at the moment. Um, where are we up to nine, ten, and eleven? They are they're all very like I said, Antoine, very episodic, but they also follow the same kind of uh, conventions. They each have a tying element that kind of feeds through the entire chapter. You've got the remember right. all for remember all for um, the previous chapter. You've got the Wingardium Leviosa spell for this chapter, and then you've got the Quidditch through the ages for the um, Quidditch chapter. So there's it's definitely an episode uses... in a series, like similar yeah. to when we do our Avatar stuff. You know, this is, you have your own little contained ep- um, episode, but you have things that are also part of the arc of the season. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it, it just it just works really well to make the whole book kind of pop out and 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 it's so devourable. You know, you can read this in. Mm. A, well, in a, in a few hours, easily, and that, not just you know dedicated readers, just the average person can do that. It's it's uh, very impressive. This book is a page turner. Mm, all of them are mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. I and mean, given the size of Indeed. the later books, that's in, that's a really impressive feat. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially for the I wonder if there's a record for reading the entire series in one sitting. Oh, God. I've not done the entire series, <laughs> but I've done three books in one sitting before. Um, the first Impressive. one specific, specifically. It's, uh, it's, it's of Harry or yeah. just of, of, of in general? Oh, Harry. Um, in general. Oh, you mean Harry Potter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant like some book yeah. for the book. Yeah, not in general, no. Uh, but yeah, just, just uh, the first three books. <laughs> I read all the Lord of the Rings in one God, day. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 yeah no but but yeah so that, that's that's this chapter and uh I, one of my favorites definitely and it's a very important one for the series you know for the characters it's it's got a lot of iconic moments in it um and i'm looking forward to covering the next one as well with the the next chapter chapter 11 yeah chapter 11 quidditch 11. uh so yeah that this has been our thoughts on uh, on chapter 10 halloween guys let us know what you think uh of our thoughts or anything you want to further explore that we've not mentioned or just dive into deeper i am ready for and i still don't have an outro Oh, I'm so sorry, but I agree with Ron. They totally should have got more than 10 points. I don't know oh, why she's oh, even so, 5 points yeah. for defeating a troll, but sorry, yes. Yeah, that's, with the that's very true. Yeah, they <laughs> just doesn't, as I said before, it doesn't fit. <laughs> you know, you get 10 points for asking a question in the future, but here they take out the entire mountain troll and get, you know, the same. Yeah, ridiculous. And it's not even 10 points once you take away Hermione, as, as Evan said. Anyway, yeah, I am ready for and I still don't have an outro. <laughs> oh, dear. Evan Nova 95, we hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys later. Wingardium Leviofa! God. <laughs> Antoine Vandalay, Peace, Love, and Mischief Manage. Also, read Quidditch of the Ages is actually a pretty good book, and it's actually legit. It was very cool, yes. We will talk about it more in the next <laughs> chapter. Uh, goodbye. Why is real, why is Muggle Quidditch a thing? <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know.